commissioners are on, um, I'll do a roll call and then we'll get started officially. Uh, Commissioner Cameron. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm here. Commissioner O'Brien. Uh, I'm here. Hopefully I don't have the issues I had yesterday. So. Well, your voice is nice and clear right now. Commissioner Zuniga. Good morning. I'm here. Thank you, and Commissioner Stebbins. Good morning, everybody. I'm here. Great. And uh, so I think we're all set. Um, as you, um, we have repeatedly informed, and it's an important um, notice, we do conduct these meetings virtually as a public meeting um, pursuant to relief that Governor Baker issued in an executive order that um, allows us to proceed under the open meeting law uh, through um, virtual collaborative technology, which we've been able to do rather successfully. If for any reason something does go um, awry today, please go to the Gaming Commission's website at massgaming.com. Thank you. And today, call to order. Today is public meeting of the Gaming Commission number 313. And today is Thursday, July 16th. And we are convening now at 10.04. Thank you. Commissioner Stebbins, do you want to get started with the minutes, please? Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in your packet, you have meetings from uh, uh, minutes from two different meetings. The first is the June 16th, 2020 meeting. Uh, obviously, both of these meetings were um, lengthy and involved a lot of discussion and back and forth with commissioners. But uh, I've been move approval of the June 16th meeting minutes subject to any corrections for non-material errors or typographical errors. Did everyone have a chance to review those minutes? Great. Any um, edits, clarifications that you'd like to make at this time? Discussion? Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes. Thank you, Shara. Five zero. Uh, also in your packet, Madam Chair, you have uh, we have the minutes from the June seventeenth, twenty twenty meeting. Again, I will also express my thanks to Shara for helping to pull these together. Uh, but I would move for their approval, uh, again, subject to any corrections for typographical errors or any other non-material matters. Any questions or edits or comments? Okay, second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. I vote. Yes, thank you, Shara. 5 0. Again, Shara, those are extensive notes. We appreciate all that you do. Thank you so much. Commissioner Stebbins, thank you too. Okay. So, moving now on to our administrative update, Interim Executive Director Karen Wells, item number three on our agenda. Uh, good morning, Chair and members of the Commission. Uh, for the first item on the agenda for my administrative update, just want to give you a report on the licensees reopening and racing reopening. So all three licensees did open their doors to the public and our MGC staff has been monitoring not only the normal integrity of operations, but also compliance with the pre open or reopening requirements set by the commission uh, related to COVID-19. So uh, I'm going to have Bruce and Burke review the reopening property by property. Uh, generally at a high level, we're getting good reports on no, no, not only the licensees' efforts uh, to comply with their commission's requirements, but also how patrons are responding to the more restrictive environments. Uh, we are particularly watching for cleanliness, social distancing, and also mass compliance. compliance. We uh, did receive a comment about spacing uh, while in line at the elevator at one of the properties. Uh, we're gonna be following up on that and checking the garages. Interestingly, I just found out a couple minutes ago, uh, the senior agent at that property had already fronted that with, with the licensee at the time. So that gives me a little confidence that the agents are watching that and looking for that. And as things happen, we'll be uh, nimble in 
looking towards any remedial measures that might need to take place. So we also have opened the racing season and after Bruce and Burke review the PPC opening, we'll jump to Alex and she'll give you an update on that racing opening. And then we'll go back to MGM and Encore for those uh, property updates. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to Bruce and, or, and if Burke uh, wants to chime in as well, just to start with PPC and the reopening of that property. Oh, Bruce, you're muted. Good morning, Commissioner, Madam Chair. I'm here with Field Manager Burke Kane today. Uh, PPC opened up with uh, 701 gaming positions. They uh, had all the required plexiglass shields installed uh, to separate machines properly. Uh, patrons came in, uh, they were all wearing masks. Uh, they uh, uh, were only serving beverages to people seated at the games or at the restaurants being served food. Uh, all in all, the uh, uh, operations ran very smoothly uh, with no problems. Do you have things to add, uh, Burke? Well, to add a little color, I think, to the uh, process at PPC, I understand that there was a six foot two, two by four roaming around on the casino floor prior to opening that had written on it, do not cut. So they were trying to uh, maximize their floor space with all the machines that they could. And I think a clever uh, little thing that's going on at PPC, and I don't want to paraphrase it wrong, is uh, enjoy your drink at your seat, not on your feet. So that was a clever thing that they had working. I understand that all three properties, it's a team effort. It's not just security roaming around telling people about some of the rules, but it's everybody in any department from slots to food and beverage, security and table games out of PPC, but uh, reminding people of the rules uh, to make sure everything is safe and sound. Burke, I think you might want to add the hatch tag, which was in this together. Uh, the same, which, in this together. Yes, <laughs> together. Yes. which I, I think reflects the team spirit that you've noted. Right. Any questions, commissioners, for Bruce and, and Burke at this time? Uh, I'll, I'll just ask one. In, uh, I know it's early because this only happened last week, but uh, have you been able to observe, let's say, um, periods of uh, higher uh, visitation, uh, weekend night? Uh, uh, that uh, you know that you could describe if there's any differences. Uh, I I think it's been been pretty stable uh, with visitation right at this point, but there you know haven't really been any special events or anything like this at this juncture that uh, would bring more crowds in. Uh, wouldn't you agree, Burke? They have, they have a nice setup at PPC. They're funneling everybody in through the ballet entrance. They have, from uh, what I saw on the casino floor, two guards receiving, two security officers receiving the guests and uh, asking them to walk up. And, and if need be, they're IDing the folks, but I think this line moves pretty steadily to get them in. Uh, we haven't had, uh, I guess, just the, the one weekend to look at, so I think going forward, we will continue to monitor at all three properties how the ebb and flow of the patron uh, numbers go. Thank you. And I forget if you, um, if one of you updated me as, as some recently as something that they wanted to do or they had done, but uh, please remind me if they installed some <laughs> machines in the, in the second floor or they plan to install some machines in the second floor, the, the area that was once uh, the simulcasting, uh, a simulcasting no. operation. No, not at this point. No, they haven't. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Other, other questions for um, Burke and, and Bruce? Commissioner O'Brien? Not at this time, no. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be in the working group, so <laughs> I've seen the t-shirt with the hashtag and the, and the other information, so I've been pleased with what I've heard so far. Yeah, um, both Commissioner O'Brien and I are, are fortunate. We've been being briefed regularly, and we appreciate the efforts um, as 
that on that restart uh, working group. Commissioner Stebbins, I think that the, this good report indicates that your uh, emphasis on a solid communication plan seems to be working. Uh, there hasn't been really any confusion about the, the standards and guidelines that we've imposed, uh, Bruce? No, yeah, I don't, don't believe so. The other Bruce, that's... <laughs> <laughs> no, that, was to, that was to Bruce Bann, and now yeah, that yeah. Or is it the one that went to George Washington University? Oh, wait. That's right. Did. That's still <laughs> us. Um, no, I, I, I think as evidence from, uh, thank you, Madam Chair, I think evidence from the, the clips that we get every day, there's been uh, very thoughtful and thorough news coverage, uh, which I'm sure our, our licensees have been, have been pushing that uh, really made sure uh, patrons understood what the guidelines would be going forward. Uh, I think to Executive uh, Director Wells' uh, point earlier about uh, some spacing in the in the garage, uh, we might want to just uh, make sure our property, all of our licensees are following up on as, as people wait to access an elevator and not overcrowd an elevator. So, good sense. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I'd also like to now turn it over to Alex to give you a, uh, an update on the racing opening. Oh, you're muted, Alex. You're muted. There we go. Sorry. So um, Planridge had their first day of live racing on Monday, and it went very well. They had 12 races, which is a good number of races. Uh, the um, Everybody was wearing their masks, and that was very good compliance. Uh, did have to remind some people to make sure it stays over their nose. So we're gonna to continue to make that um, well known to everybody. <clears throat> um, with the social distancing, we had noticed um, during qualifiers that people, the horsemen kind of gathered along the um, rail to watch their horses race. So um, talking to Steve O'Toole, he um, took one of the fences out partially so they could spread out some more. So that worked pretty well on Monday. And um, talking to um, Steve and the horseman yesterday, I think we're going to go ahead and mark the six feet out along the outside of that rail so that um, to give people the sense of the distance they should be keeping. So a few little tweaks like that. Um, we did some tweaks with the judges stand, um, but overall it's uh, going very well. Um, just to update you very quickly, um, Rainham Simulcasting opened last week. And I did go down on their opening day and um, Mr. Carney showed me around and um, very well um, spread out. And um, lots of the patrons uh, as we walked through were telling Mr. Carney how happy they were to be back at the races. Um, Suffolk is opening their simulcasting today, which is also the first day of Saratoga. So the timing is very well. Um, and um, I spoke with Chip this morning um, and uh, he feels that everything is in place or a, a smooth opening there as well. I won't be out there today, but hopefully either uh, tomorrow or Saturday, I'll make it out to Suffolk to see how that's going. Any questions? Commissioner um, Cameron? Yes, doc, Dr. Lightbaum, there was some um, discussion and we've discussed this about uh, possibly rearranging the, uh, instead of uh, lining up uh, via race, it would be the trainer. Any more um, discussion about whether or not you think that would be um, viable or something that makes sense? Um, we, uh, D Executive Director Wells and I had a conversation with uh, the harness horsemen yesterday, mm -hmm. and they're going to kind of flesh out their plan and we'll um, review it. The way it's working right now um, it seems to be working well. Um, we have an empty stall between every horse, so there's plenty of social distancing that way for both the horses and for the people. Um, and when they're by race, um, it's easier for our folks to um, find people. For instance, on the blood gas testing, we do that by race and we just go, you know, right, right down the line on that. So um, mm -hmm. there's different pros and cons and we'll be further discussing that with the horsemen and with Steve O'Toole going forward. Great, so there's a good level of, it sounds like, communication and um, listening to one another and figuring out best practices. Yes, and um, I wanna mention too, um, with, uh, using the whole backside as the paddock area, there had to be some adjustments made to the stalls. And um, the horsemen were um, generous um, and some of them donated um, uh, the gates for the stalls and the eye hooks and the different um, materials that, that um, Plain Ridge needed so that they could get it done um, quickly and didn't have to wait for those materials to come in. 
So there has been a good degree of uh, cooperation among everyone. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you. Other questions for Dr. Lightbound? Just, just to pick up on the, on you know, this your description of the barn area and the paddock. Um, how much, um, uh, you, you know, how is it working in general in terms of the number of people that come and go? You said uh, everybody's shipping, right? No one right. is, is, is going to be stalled there. Um, is it fair to say that there's uh, um, uh, a good degree of um, just crossing over and people still respecting the, the social distancing? I mean, a, a horse has a natural, um, uh, you know, six feet apart, especially given the fact that you're not supposed to go behind it. But um, how are your operations, if any, impacted or have to modify? Um, yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, you know, we have modified certain things in the test barn where we would come into contact with the trainer, such as signing documents. I had gone over that um, issue with our legal team and they felt it was still um, the best practice to get the actual signature. So, um, you know, we'll um, put the card down on um, a bench, step away from it, and then the trainer or their representative will step forward and sign it and then they step back. So um, that's an instance where normally the people would come in closer contact. Um, with the taking of the samples for the horses, like you said, there's an automatic um, you know, self-distancing with putting the trainer on the other side of the horse from the veterinarian. And um, everybody's um, very comfortable doing that. So that's worked out well. I Dr. remember Lightbulb. Commissioner, Commissioner Hammeron remembers the device to collect some of the samples. Uh, that has a natural <laughs> distancing as well. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Cameron? It, it should have a natural distancing. You're right about that. Um, I just had a question. Are they remembering uh, Dr. Lightbomb to bring their own pens? Yes, um, th that's a learning process. And um, so what I did was I bought a bunch of cheap pens and if somebody comes in without one, I just, we hand them one and th they're told to take it with them and use that. Um, the, it sounds like kind of um, maybe a, a silly request, um, but when you add up the numbers uh, with 12 races, there's 24 blood samples taken pre-race and there's 24 taken after. And then that's in addition to maybe 50 horses that race on LASIK. So you're easily getting up to 100 pens a day. And if our staff um, was responsible for disinfecting that and all, it adds up. We're already disinfecting our clipboards. We disinfect the tie chains in the test barn, the buckets and other things. So um, we're, we've, we're working with HHANE to um, continue to get this, this product done. Right, and get them to remember to bring their own, right? Right, yeah. Great. Well, good. It was good of you. You sound like um, a school teacher, frankly. You're just going to go out and get the right supplies if you need them. So um, exactly thank right. you for that. Thank you. <clears throat> Dr. Lightbound, I just want to uh, note that we've had the benefit of having the Department of Agriculture has gone down to and done their part to, to review the premises and, and overall have given some, some additional insights and, and felt pleased um, with the overall compliance are you, um, at this point, I know that you had your two qualifying races as well last week. At this point, do you feel that you have all the supplies? I know other than pens, but in terms of you're getting all the hand sanitizer, the uh, sanitation from PPC that you need, the signage that you need, are you feeling that there's you know, good support on that end? Yes. Excellent. They put up a bunch of new um, signs. Um, some requests were for, for larger signs, so they've done that. Um, they're working with HHANE on um, getting hand sanitizer that everybody um, is comfortable with. So, yeah. And then the only other thing I wanted to mention is Dr. Lightbound shared with me that you know, the good news that this is a this is a small community, but it's a, a committed community, and over a hundred uh, reemployed folks um, came to the qualifying races last week. Yes. Um, each day and so jobs are restored and, and that's a great thing and also just their their passion is restored so we're happy to see that uh, the, the races have begun. In terms of spectators, live spectators, uh, did, besides those that were immediately attached, the owners, were there other folks who were outside of the simulcast indoor area enjoying the, the races? 
Um, I didn't get over there on Monday to see that, but I'm, I'm sure there were. Um, when I went over to the um, simulcast area the week before when they reopened, there were about um, 30 to 40 people in there. And I'm sure that number will increase, um, you know, probably starting today and over the weekend with Saratoga. And then um, today and tomorrow with the live racing, obviously, um, we'll have more of the owners will come out um, and be, you know, spectators along the uh, outside on the April. Well, I'm expecting there'll be continued compliance on the social distancing. Um, yeah. It seems uh, as though everybody's very aware. The are all spaced yeah. out and, um, you know, there's, they um, will be taking, keeping track of the number of people that can come in as well. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we wish them well. It's, it's nice to hear that people are complying, readily complying on both the casino side, the patrons, as well as all of the folks involved in racing. Because, you know, you read from other states, and that's frankly not the case, that uh, the compliance is, is a more difficult process. So it's really nice to hear that, um, um, you know, between communication plans and reminders and, uh, you know, I think leadership from the top at, at state government here in Massachusetts, folks have got the message and are complying. So that's really nice to, to hear from, from staff that that's happening. Really is. Other it's questions? It's good to hear. One, one just out of curiosity, Alex, do you know if Saratoga is it, it, going to be a, a shorter meet? It would have been started by um, now? I'm not or? sure if it's going to be shorter. Um, I, th I think they're doing it without um, spectators to begin with, but I'd, I'd have to double check. <clears throat> Um, I don't want to embarrass our, the, the good Dr. Lightbound, but it was nice to read that you have been, you elevated to chairing um, the standard bread committee for RCI. That is uh, uh, certainly, um, it's our good fortune that we have somebody as qualified and well-respected in the industry that you are now a chair of a, um, of a committee when I started getting involved with racing eight years ago, there were very few women in leadership positions. So Dr. Lightbaum, congratulations for that. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Make us proud, Alex. Oh, thank you. All right, Other so questions on, on racing? Um, okay, I'll, uh, Karen, go right ahead. Yeah, so I'll just turn it over to Bruce and Berg now to talk about MGM and that reopening. Excellent, thank you. All right, uh, MGM, they opened up with 909 uh, gaming positions. That's 819 slots, 90 tables. Uh, they uh, uh, not only had uh, plastic on the table, uh, plexiglass on the tables as separators, but also on some of their slots. They didn't uh, put as many on slot machines so that uh, accounts for the limited number of slots that they had on the floor. They also had uh, uh, plastic dividers inside uh, the cage and count rooms for their employees uh, and uh, every other uh, uh, cage window open. Uh, they had uh, a, a good opening as well with compliance with masks and stuff, very, very uh, few problems. The employees all jumped in with uh, uh, correcting any patrons that uh, uh, were uh, non-compliant and made sure that they pulled the masks up correctly and you know the, the problems that would be expected with something that would be new to the public. You have uh, other comments, Bert? Uh, I think at the two uh, table game casinos, MGM and uh, Encore, uh, there could have been concern about having plexiglass on a table game We've been reviewing that closely. The rules of the game, uh, surveillance coverage, things like that aren't affected. I thought personally that maybe communication could have been a, a part of that and we don't seem to be getting any uh, issues with that. Uh, Bruce mentioned the cashier's cage. Uh, also noted is that when the chips are redeemed at the cashier's cage, they're being brought to the back to be sanitized before they're brought back out, out on the floor as they uh, we're discussing pre-opening, so that's working well at both properties. Um, at MGM, as we know about the open floor plan, they had a little bit of a challenge to get it, everybody in and off the floor in a uh, functional manner. 
they set up a really, really nice setup where they really funnel people to the front near the ballet entrance. We have two um, setups of uh, security officers reviewing the people coming in and um, that's, that's worked out very well. And uh, I think uh, Madam Chair and Commissioner O'Brien were mentioning the working group. Before all of this opening went down, there was a lot of work that went in with uh, the casinos, the slot department, security, surveillance, food and beverage, cashier's cage. Everybody was asking so many questions. We were able to get a lot of answers pre-opening, but there was a lot of work done by a lot of people on the casino side. And a tip of the cap to our three senior supervisors on property, mm -hmm. how well they uh, handled listening to all the concerns that casinos had, and the gaming agents for their work to make sure a lot of this process was uh, in place that has made it so far a very good first week. So uh, we'll continue to monitor the requirements that the commission has set forth. But right now, I would agree with Bruce that we've had a, uh, a good successful opening. We're in uncharted waters, of course, and um, uh, casino gaming, you, you don't know what could happen tomorrow, but fingers crossed that we keep going and uh, everything works out well. Anybody have any questions on MGM? Um, I had a question about how about that hand washing station? Is that being used or is yeah. it? Yeah, uh, I, I haven't heard anything pro or, or minus about them. It, they're they're unusual. The first time I've seen them. Yes, you heard they, anything, Burke, on those? Yeah, they, they set up a very nice uh, two station uh, hand washer. Might have been another one I didn't notice, but uh, yeah, it's just a very nice setup so people can freely walk up, wash their hands, and there's um, you know the towels to take care of everything. Yep. Good. Did they convert what had been the uh, serve your self uh, right. sodas or, or soft beverages? If, for those who didn't see that, that's where these very nice hand washing stations are set up and look lovely. And if you're out and about shifting to your slot machine, you can use the hand washing and it's very thoughtful. Very yes, thoughtful. it's unique. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, you, it's, and, and that's after a lot of years of, of seeing casinos, Bruce. I, I've, yeah, I have never seen that in a casino ever. Uh, yeah. I, I was just going to say, if everybody remembers back to the Nichols days um, and coins, your hands would get quite dirty. Coin dust was dirty. So that would have been a nice thing to have back in the I, 80s, yeah. 80s and 90s, right? I remember one casino that had a high roller section and they thought it would be nice to get the high rollers gloves and somebody in marketing didn't really think this through. They got white leather gloves. And within an hour, they were all black leather gloves from the coins. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. That, interesting. You see no go unnamed. Uh, <laughs> we'll move to Encore now. Yeah, just, just to make sure everyone's all set with um, MGM. MGM. And they, they are maintaining a, um, a, a counter on occupancy. Yes. Yes, uh, all three properties are. Uh, Encore opened up with 2,449 gaming positions. That's uh, 1,882 slots, 567 uh, table games. Encore opened up with a lot uh, more plastic dividers between slot machines than uh, MGM did. Uh, they uh, uh, also take the temperature of everyone coming in. They, it's actually a device that you walk by and it uh, takes the, the uh, patron's temperature coming in. They do that for the employees as well. Uh, it seems to be going well. Uh, uh, they have the plastic dividers uh, in the cage and in the count rooms as well as uh, MGM did on, on the tables. As a whole, it seems to be going very well. They, they haven't had uh, uh, numerous problems or anything. Uh, they've been keeping social distance in the back of the house as well. Uh, I, I think it, it's been going pretty well uh, over there as well. You have uh, additions, Burke? No, I, I think you pretty much covered it. Um, at Encore specifically, it's the security department, games department slots. They did a really good job of uh, maximizing that casino floor. Surveillance was 
in on uh, making sure everything was uh, properly able to be viewed without getting into details. And um, it, it was a job well done at, at Encore also. I think we need to continue to uh, get a bigger sample. Once again, uh, another weekend is coming up and uh, we are monitoring the occupancy rules. Uh, we're monitoring some of the requirements that the commission set forth once again for the uh, COVID uh, requirements also. Yes. As a whole, I think all the employees are, are full in too with, uh, uh, you know, reminding people of, of requirements that we put forth uh, to them as far as wearing masks, not walking around with uh, beverages and, and those type of issues. Yes, numerous, numerous feedback from the gaming agent staff to us that um, once again, all departments are trying to help assure that these rules are being followed. Uh, they're talking to the patrons. Any question? <laughs> I had a quick question it, uh, with regard to taking the temperature of patrons as well as employees. Um, to your knowledge, is there anyone that has had an issue with an elevated temperature and has been asked to leave yet or? Not that I'm aware of. Have you heard anything, Burke? That, that's a good question. I, it hasn't been brought to me yet. Um, we we yes. can find that, we could find that out for you. And there is no um, pushback from patrons about having their temperature. It's so non-invasive that people are complying easily is that what I, you're saying that th i have not heard of anybody arguing with it or or you know refusing to go through the line or or anything at this point no great thank you uh and, and remind us um both hotels are remain closed um and it's only restaurants uh as well um is it all, mostly all the restaurants um at they, uh, each of the operations? Or? They have a few restaurants, uh, you know, open it as well in there. I think some of the smaller venues that, that uh, it's harder to six foot distance inside the, the, the restaurant, they have not opened. Oh, sure. Like that, uh, like the Oyster Bar, for example, I can imagine Correct. that's that's difficult. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, if you six foot distance, you wouldn't have very many patrons in, mm -hmm. inside it to make it worthwhile. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I just wanted to follow up on the comments that um, Bruce and Burke have made too about occupancy in terms of the working group. Um, we at the last date, um, the last time we had the public meeting was before the governor's guidelines came out. <clears throat> on July 2nd, we had looked at those for the other venues that are opening in phase three. And do we want to, what's been on the ground since opening? Um, we have looked at what the other larger venues that are opening in phase three look like in terms of do we want to overlay a percentage occupancy cap? As Burke said, as more things open, maybe as the hotels open, the restaurants open, we are, um, we do not see a need to revisit what we have done at this point. It seems to be working very well. Um, but to the point that um, Burke made, as more things open, we are going to keep an eye on that. And we are going to keep looking, looking at some of the metrics that the governor has used in other areas to see if any are useful for us or for any property in particular. Um, and so that is part of, we are meeting regularly to, to continue to look at that. Um, we don't have a request today to revisit anything, but um, I did want to bring that up just to get everybody on the commission to know that we are still looking at that quite a bit. Um, and then to follow up also on um, the messaging part of this, um, I know that um, Commissioner Stebbins made a point of emphasizing that. And one of the things that we did do also is put some of the highlights on our website so that if people came to us to sort of get a sense of what was required, they would have the highlights. And I just wanted to give a shout out in particular to Austin Bumpus because he put a really great, concise, graphic on our website and he turned it around incredibly quickly so i just i also want to give a shout out to him because anytime we've asked him to jump in and help on that he's been tremendously helpful yes and and, and in coordination with sarah magazine who's a newcomer yes. to our team and of course it also went out to linkedin so we um it's a really good point that commissioner o'brien raised you know, we are supporting um the uh, casinos in their communication uh, again informed much by Commissioner Stebbins 
reminder to all of us how important communications are here. So thank you. Yeah, Austin turned that around very yeah. quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah great job. Okay, so if there are any comments uh, on the on the relicensing of the licensing reopening. Okay, uh, so the next item on the administrative update is uh, item 3B, which is the uh, Gaming Commission status on return to workplace compliance and guidelines. So this is our internal uh, guidelines and efficacy for making sure our own employees are safe. So we have been uh, monitoring that uh, reopening of the casinos from our employees' perspective. Uh, we have uh, implemented, as discussed, the enhanced safety and hygiene procedures. Uh, that includes providing masks, face shields, hand sanitizer, soap, and cleaning supplies. So many thanks to um, the finance division, the HR division, and all the work on that. Uh, we also have, regarding use of equipment, uh, cleaning procedures for the workstations. So people know when they come before they leave, clean the clean the workstation, the certain uh, certain shared devices, and also when you come in to also clean that. And there is cleaning supplies for the employees to use. Uh, we also have uh, rules on interacting with others, uh, including masks being worn, masks being worn, and social distancing being observed. Uh, we've also got training. We've got not only our state training through the MGC, but on-site training offered by licensees is also being offered to. Uh, the employees from the MGC that are going to be on site. So that's been effective in uh, cross training on both the licensees perspective and the MGC's perspective on these procedures. And also our, you know, regarding HR and management, uh, we have been working with employees to ensure uh, their safety and also making them feel safe, addressing their concerns, making ourselves available if they have questions. And, and continuing to have an open dialogue with employees because that's really important as well. So that continues to happen. Uh, I also have uh, our HR manager, Tripti Banda, on, on the meeting today. Uh, Tripti, do you have any further comments or any uh, other insight for the commissioners on our internal opening procedures? Um, no, I think that you covered um, most of the highlights uh, that we have. We have a lot of drilled down details into providing the support um, on the high level overview that Karen has provided. And uh, we're making ourselves available um, for any concerns employees have um, to ensure their safety and um, providing accommodations where necessary. Okay. Or required. Any commissioners have any questions regarding that area? Uh, yeah, thank you. I um, I can see that you're in the office, uh, Karen, yes. from, uh, from your tile, but um, right. I'm curious, um, you know, if you get a sense of how many people are going to the office, or oh, if very this is few. More, it's, it's more the exception just, rather yeah. than at the right. beginning. Right. I needed to get a couple things from the office, so that's why I'm here today. We have a state police presence here. I haven't seen anyone else at the office, which is uh, pursuant to our protocol. It's really as as needed basis to come into the office. And those who are um, going into the office for very specific reasons um, are required to. Um, you know, complete a training that we have for safety measures. They have all the necessary PPE equipment uh, at the facilities, at the offices, and um, it's very limited. Thank you. Now, I know, uh, you know, one of the big principles of the uh, governor's guidelines is that those who can continue to right. uh, work remotely, and, and, and this is a prime example, uh, but as you were, uh, as I know, um, you were describing there there are some exceptions and some particulars that right. have merited um, glad that uh, everybody is adhering to the protocols okay okay all right um and any any other questions on that okay uh, my my only comment would be that i'd like to thank commissioners cameron and stebbins for their support on the, the internal reopening and the working with your your internal group karen so thank, thank you. you yes absolutely Yes. Uh, and so I suspect that that will be continuing just like the restart group uh, okay. as well to, to monitor that, especially as, as things shift, hopefully, okay. in the near future. Right. I hope. Right. <laughs> All right. So the next item on the agenda, item 3C, is the uh, an update on the MGC internal controls. Uh, so just wanted to highlight a few things for you that have been going on. 
Uh, we did complete the FY 2021 internal control plan for the agency, and that plan ties in with the work of our internal audit and compliance group, which has uh, been identifying risks and mitigation efforts for the agency on an ongoing basis for several years now. Uh, so I want to give uh, thanks to the tremendous effort of that group, and particularly CFO Lennon, Commissioner Zuniga, and Chair Judd Stein on uh, completing that plan. It's, it's very impressive. Uh, I know that uh, I was impressed by the amount of work that went into it and the level of detail. The team utilized uh, guidelines from the Comptroller's Office to formulate the plan and contribute to the efficiency and integrity of the office, including uh, addressing efforts to prevent uh, waste, fraud, and abuse. Uh, so it's an extensive document. It was certainly helpful to me in understanding uh, our controls and why we have them in place. And that was distributed to everyone in the office uh, to read and understand and, and get a further understanding of the importance of internal controls uh, and what the, the approach is from the commission. Uh, so I, I don't, I'll leave it to see if uh, anyone has any questions on that. And then I have some other uh, notes on inter internal controls update. I don't know if Commissioner Ziga, Zuniga or, or Chair Stein, Judd Stein has any, any comments or questions on the internal control plan before I move on. Commissioner? Yeah, let me just uh, just mention that um, this is uh, uh, this is very important uh, in terms of uh, our own compliance um, with the controller's guidelines. It's something that we, we do every year. Uh, there's been a, a good renewed focus on this, thanks to the efforts of uh, Chair Judd Stein. And, um, and what's important to also remember is not just the completion of uh, of, of the document or the enhancement, but the notion of coming to it regularly, annually, really. And uh, in other words, the exercise of doing this review is also important. It facilitates, it mitigates um, risk. Um, it, uh, it is a good reminder that, um, that we need to focus on it. Um, and I think uh, it's, 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 working, it's working well. So I encourage everybody I know, um, Karen, uh, you already distributed the document. I encourage uh, everybody to, to read it um, and, um, you know, and continue to provide feedback as we continue. It is an ongoing process, continue to improve uh, the document and our own procedures. Yes. Yeah, I want to um, thank uh, Derek for all his work, but I think Derek, if um, I don't see his tile right in front of He's me. He's on now, vacation but I know, today. That's right. I know yes. that he would chime in, um, as we know, it's his habit to give credit to others. But I think that the, um, as Commissioner Zuniga suggests, the, the one thing about these types of internal control plans and risk assessment, it really does take the entire enterprise uh, to be able to work together. And Derek has had that support throughout. Um, uh, on, on devising this particular plan to get the input from all of the, the directors. So it really does take the entire agency. So thank you and thank you to Derek and his team. And of course, behind um, Derek is the magic work of Jacqueline. So yes. particular shout out to Jacqueline for, for really finalizing the document. Absolutely, I, I will say I did get, uh, after sending it out, I did get a very detailed question on the internal control plan from uh, Stroke Carpenter. Uh, who, oh. did, no, not surprisingly, clearly read the entire document. So just uh, I was impressed by that level of detail. Uh, so the, the other thing, we also submitted the annually required internal control questionnaire to the or ICQ to the Comptroller's Office, which helps provide an indication of effectiveness of not only our controls, but helps that office assess the controls uh, by state agencies across the Commonwealth. Uh, for the Comptroller's Office, internal controls are critical in creating an environment that is accountable to the public and will demonstrate proper stewardship of public resources while still being responsive to the needs and direction of senior management. Uh, so completing that questionnaire along the lines of what Commissioner Zuniga was saying was also helpful in assessing our controls and making sure all state requirements and best practices are in place. When you go through that exercise and you do it question by question by question. It makes you think about what's going on at the agency and make sure you're doing things properly. So I found that to be a very helpful exercise as well. And that was submitted uh, on time uh, by the end of the fiscal year. Uh, in addition, we also submitted our biannually required security review submission uh, to the Comptroller's Office, which includes a review 
of our agency systems user access overall uh, that uh, ensures the proper people have access to systems in HR, IT, and finance, and it also identifies authorized uh, signatory delegation. In sum, the way I understand it, it documents that the right people have the right access to sensitive systems at the commission. Make sure that make sure that um, that's all in place properly, and and also if someone leaves, we make sure that that access is now no longer granted. So. Uh, that all went very well, and that was also submitted by the end of the fiscal year uh, in accordance with the guidelines. So just wanted to let the commissioners know that, um, but the ICQ and the security review submission, uh, I don't know if anyone has any comments or questions on that. Okay, oh. so that, uh, that concludes my administrative update. So uh, I think the next item on the agenda goes to the legal division, Madam Chair. Actually, right. before we before we move on, can I can I just uh, mention something uh, for for consideration for a later meeting, um, uh, as uh, as we have done in the past, the role of in in, in this effort, um, there is a role that's identified as the risk officer, usually by the comptroller's office, uh, as somebody who um, oversees and shepherds a lot of these efforts. Uh, in the past, uh, organically, it, it, it fell to CFAO uh, Lennon, uh, but there's, um, there's a good reason to think about or rethink about whether that role should, should, play, should be with somebody who is also part of uh, the operations that are going to be examined and, and assessed. So I just want to put a placeholder as in um, uh, as we continue these, these uh, examining uh, these internal controls, uh, we should think about um, the role of the risk officer in conjunction with the group that uh, Eileen and I, Commissioner O'Brien and I are, are part of, um, uh, which, which we have uh, named the, the risk um, assessment and internal audit uh, group. It's been a group that was formed uh, to precisely talk collectively with directors, with key directors about these issues, among uh, among others. And uh, again, the role of risk officer will have to be one that we come back and uh, update uh, the commission with a recommendation. I th yeah, and, and uh, Commissioner Zuniga, you raised that with me, and I do think I, I've raised with um, um, Interim Executive Director Wells uh, the yes. issue around compliance, then what should really perhaps be you know, more on an operational basis and understanding of the operational basis versus kind of the, the larger policy work that might come out of the compliance committee or, um, you know, the risk um, assessment committee that you and Commissioner O'Brien are on. So I think that, that it really is important for, uh, for us to have um, a discussion with all five commissioners. So let's, uh, for next week's um, agenda study meeting, think about that when there can be some Good preparation and the issues can be sorted out and we can start to take initial steps to give direction on on how to manage those important areas. That sounds good. Make sense? Mm -hmm. It's a way to start off the fall. All right. Kick off with compliance, right? All right. And then Excellent. Excellent. And then, you know, it, it will be also figuring out the best resources to, you know, to use because it's, it's, it's extensive work that's actually done on a regular daily basis by every member of, 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 of the Gaming Commission. Every team member really is responsible for some degree of compliance. So it takes a, it takes a village. Thank you. Um, so I'll just mention that to Marianne to, to just note for next week's agenda setting. Going on then to item number four, as Karen indicated, uh, Mr. Grossman, Interim General Counsel. Todd, if you want to get started on your matters, please. Number sure. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Commissioners and all. Uh, we have uh, two regulations before you uh, for uh, final approval. If uh, you're so inclined, you'll recall the first one has to do with uh, obligations for payment of unclaimed uh, winnings and cash and prizes. Uh, by statute, you'll remember the patrons have one year 
to claim uh, cash winnings and prizes. That's under section 53 of chapter 23K. This uh, provision has also been codified in the regulations at 138.68, which is where the amendments will reside. And with the temporary suspension of the operations of the casinos, uh, a regulation clarification that that one year period doesn't include the period of time that the gaming establishment isn't in operation uh, was put in place. This, uh, these amendments went into effect by emergency on April 24th. Uh, a public hearing was subsequently held on July 2nd, was presided over by Commissioner Stebbins. Um, I don't know if Commissioner Stebbins, if you'd like to um, uh, address uh, that portion. I don't think there was uh, too much activity at that uh, public session. Yeah, no, we didn't have anybody. Um, we did have some participants listen into the hearing, but nobody offered any comments or recommendations. Um, so with that, uh, if you are so inclined, uh, the regulation has moved through the formal promulgation process and is ready for uh, final adoption. Uh, there is a, an amended small business impact statement uh, as required by law that uh, is in your packet and would re require accompanying review. Has everybody had a chance to uh, look at that motion? And uh, we're quite familiar with the regulation, having just visited it. Are there any questions for Todd now? All right. Do I I have a motion then, please. Madam Chair, I move that uh, the Commission approve the amended small business impact statement for 205 CMR 138.68. That is the expiration of gaming related obligations owed to patrons, payment to gaming revenue fund, as included in the Commissioner's packet. Second. Any further questions? Okay, roll call. Commissioner Chairman. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes. Thank you, Shara. A related motion is needed, I believe. Yes, Madam Chair, I further move that uh, the Commission adopt the version of 205 CMR 138.68. That is the expiration of gaming related obligations owed to patrons, payment to the gaming revenue fund, as included in the commissioner's packet, and authorizes staff to take all steps necessary to finalize the regulation promulgation process. Second. Any further questions? Okay. Roll call vote. Mr. Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. So, yes, 5 0. Thank you. Todd? Thank you. Uh, the second uh, set of amendments pertain to uh, Section 109 of the Commission's regulations. And you'll recall that these pertain to the Commission's and clarify the Commission's authority to act in the event of an emergency. Uh, these two were placed into effect uh, by emergency in May, uh, early May uh, of this year. They too have gone through the formal promulgation process. They were part of that same uh, July 2nd uh, public hearing that was presided over by Commissioner Stebbins. I don't believe there was any comment on those either. Um, and they too are ready for uh, formal uh, adoption. Are there any questions for Todd? Again, this was one that we dealt with recently. Hearing we, none. We, we received no comments. Uh, I know none at the hearing, but no comments in, in the interim either, Todd? There was nothing in the interim. Uh, you re may recall early on, before we even began the process, we did share the draft with the license so they're aware of the content and certain modifications were made before um, it even started moving its way through the process. Thank you. Other questions? 
Do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd move that the commission approve the amended small business impact statement for 205 CMR 109. Authority of the commission to act in an emergency situation is included in the commissioner's copy. Second. Thank you. Any, any further questions or edits? Okay, very none. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes, 5-0, sure, thank you. And the related motion? Madam Chair, I'd further move that the commission adopt the version of 205 CMR 109, authority of the commission to act in an emergency situation as included in the commissioner's packet and authorize the staff to take all steps necessary to finalize the regulation promulgation process. Second. Second. Okay. Any questions or edits? Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. I vote yes, five zero. Again, I want to thank Commissioner O'Brien uh, for really working extensively on that um, important regulation. So it's come to uh, full fruition, and of course, the entire legal team. Thank you. I know you worked really closely with the commissioner. Thank you. Okay. Now we're moving on to um, item number five, and I apologize. I do have some background noise today, um, neighbor's yard. Um, commissioner Zuniga on the executive director search update. And I just want to note that it's 11 o'clock. Uh, so we only have a couple more items left on our agenda. And I, I, I feel that's a little bit of a gift in light of the, the long days that you have all um, done over the last several weeks, really months, so thank you. With that though, I don't mean to in any way shorten your, um, your, your uh, part, but I just thought it was an interesting landmark <laughs> for, for one of our meetings, thank you. Commissioner Zuniga. Sure, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And this uh, should not take uh, a long time unless, of course, my colleagues have questions. Um, you might uh, remember uh, what, what seemed like a, a very long time ago, uh, prior to the pandemic. Uh, we started uh, a process of engaging uh, an executive search firm for the role of uh, our executive director. You delegated to me, if you recall, the management of the procurement uh, you know, that we started actually uh, prior to the closure of casinos. And uh, the scope included an internal cons consultation with the staff uh, to identify priorities uh, for the executive director, um, an update of a job description, uh, et cetera. Uh, then the, um, the pandemic, uh, uh, you know, uh, manifested itself in, uh, in, in the middle of March with the closure of the casinos. And uh, you might also recall that I came in and gave an update that we were at that time, uh, I, I believe um, this was late March or, or early or middle of April, we were suspending the procurement uh, for all the reasons that, uh, uh, that were um, of course uh, manifesting themselves. Um, I should go back a little bit and say that uh, there was at least um, an assumption that um, we, would, uh, we would conduct a, a process uh, uh, with, with the help of a search firm, and that, uh, that, that would include a consultation of some kind with the staff, uh, and that would inform um, a search, perhaps not unlike, perhaps very much like, uh, searches that we have done in the past. Uh, we had a couple of options. Uh, we have always had a couple of options at our disposal, delegating to a commissioner or uh, designating a search um, committee, uh, et cetera. Again, we didn't get to any of that because we suspended the procurement uh, of the search firm um, uh, around April. Um, so a number of things have happened since uh, that I already touched on, the closure, uh, the remote, the remote uh, work, um, the reopening. Uh, we've, uh, we have, of course, had 
a good opportunity to see Karen uh, perform in her role uh, of interim executive director that is now uh, well into um, you know its fifth month or perhaps more if I'm not uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So um, another uh, point of highlight here is um, our hiring uh, policy. The policy that we have uh, for all of the positions uh, is based on, on best practices uh, and one that includes enough flexibility to give the hiring manager uh, the discretion to not advertise the position and consider an internal candidate uh, at any time in the, in the process. So when it comes to the executive director, uh, it is clear that the hiring manager is the full commission. Um, and as such, I think we should uh, discuss uh, whether we want to uh, advertise uh, the position and continue with some kind of version of the process that we have done in the past or set out to do initially, uh, or whether we should recognize that uh, the job, the good job that Karen has been, has been doing um, is uh, significant and presume uh, that uh, she should be offered um, the, the job of the permanent executive uh, director. Uh, I say presume, uh, because the answer to that question that I'm posing, um, we could still and should still uh, do uh, a process, uh, not unlike what we envisioned, uh, but could include important elements of consultation with the staff, uh, doing a survey, uh, for example, to identify uh, priorities as we move forward, uh, et cetera. Uh, I could, um, I could just further describe um, with internal resources, very uh, inexpensive survey monkey type, uh, we could design um, uh, a survey for, uh, that could be um, distributed um, broadly to, to, to the staff, uh, targeted uh, uh, to directors, for example, that could be a second survey. We could uh, just do that anonymously, voluntarily. Um, and that process, again, which was initially envisioned to be done with the help of a search firm, uh, could really inform uh, the discussion as we now, the discussion of commissioners, as we now uh, continue um, uh, to set priorities um, for, the, for, the, uh, for, the, for, for Karen in a permanent, um, in a permanent capacity. Um, I could stop there. Uh, this is a question that I bring as a necessary uh, update. Uh, we could, um, it's been now uh, well over uh, five months, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Uh, let me mention this one more thing. Uh, when, we, when we first uh, set the, the salary of, of Karen in her interim role, um, we did so with uh, the expectation that that would be uh, for a short period of time. Uh, that, I remember even making this comment publicly that we could come and should come back and revisit if, the peer, if that period of time extended more than two or three months. Um, this is another reason that uh, we should talk about it uh, as, we, as we determine how to, how to move forward. So uh, the question is that I pose, um, to all of you, my colleagues, is to um, whether we want to exercise uh, the discretion that, that we have had uh, uh, from, the, from the beginning, uh, but of course now informed by um, you know, months of, of seeing Karen, and presume her as, um, as, a, as, the, as the finalist for a permanent position. Um, and if that's a yes, uh, undergo a process for identifying um, those uh, um, priorities, um, uh, consulting uh, with the staff, and eventually um, all of that could inform uh, a performance evaluation of some kind of her in an interim role by the commissioners, like we have done in the past, as a way to jumpstart or begin 
a permanent uh, a permanent position. So I think today you're not, we don't have, this doesn't require a vote, but rather a consensus on how to move forward. Um, as I think Commissioner Zuniga points out, uh, yep. did ask him to uh, lead this effort. And I want to thank uh, Enrique for all of his uh, thoughtful work. Uh, and the idea would be that we would bypass the formal posting, but not bypass the process altogether, seek additional agency-wide input on the role of the executive director, and then um, perhaps input um, an, a more like an assessment tool from those who have been reporting to Karen during this time. And I think I would say it's more than, I would say, gosh, she started in January, so we're already in July. So um, six and a half months. I think I'm right on that timing. So it really would be a half, you know, a half year as assessment of sorts, allowing us to have some objective information to moving um, on to, to a, a perhaps the formal hire. Uh, and I, and your timing, you would think about that perhaps would be, oh, uh, you'd like so that the interim status, um, if, if this were to proceed for Karen, then uh, it would be earlier than the fall, ideally, correct, Commissioner? Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, it's, it's all up to us. And that's the reason mainly to, um, mostly, uh, of course, to, uh, to try to figure out. We would do it in, uh, in you know, at a pace that everybody is comfortable with. Right. Uh, let me mention something um, that I meant to um, relative to the process of consulting, which is which is your, your point, uh, Chair. Uh, I, I I believe I have no um, uh, first hand, but I believe that um, some of the priorities that could be identified are, are well known by by Karen, or at least at least some of them. Um, I I have my own ideas about what I would identify as a priority. And that a subset of that may have not, may have those priorities may have been put on hold um, for the simple reason that she's operating in an interim capacity. And that uh, anybody in a permanent capacity would feel uh, a lot more empowered, I believe, to address uh, some of those uh, priorities. And I have, again, uh, this is something that the process itself would identify, I would hope. Um, but and, and and therefore, um, it's uh, you know not only uh, necessary but appropriate to um, to continue to conduct. Commissioners, feedback for Commissioner Zuniga. Commissioner Cameron. Uh, yes, I'm just trying to understand um, the process. So I think you're asking us, Commissioner Zuniga, to consider. Um, not posting the position, not hiring a search firm, but to, to use assessment tools. And that really is to make sure that our, um, what we think are priorities and the staff thinks are important attributes um, that will inform our decision as to, and I, and I would suspect inform the interim executive uh, director's decision on whether or not this is exactly what she may have thought it was? Is that what I'm hearing? I think it's two part, right, Commissioner Zuniga? Yes, it's it's two part. Um, you know, let me, um, let's just assume that if we all agree that we don't post the position and we presume her to be the finalist, um, what we would do, if that's, if that's a yes, um, what we would do is still conduct, again, a process of consultation to identify uh, priorities, much like we would, we were thinking about doing for anybody. We just would be calling what I think is a, is a fair uh, presumption to say in her, in her capacity, having performed the way she has in the past few months, um, let's do away with inviting other candidates if, if, we, if we believe that she's likely to be uh, in a good position to be successful. Um, that's not to say that um, we would just do that and do nothing else. We would still um, you know, perform, uh, again, a consultation with the staff if, you are, if we are also inclined, as we initially um, set out to do. 
Um, and we could as well uh, inform that process could inform each one of us commissioners in which we would do a, a, a performance evaluation of sorts. Uh, and I say of sorts only because it's not a full year, it's not in a, full, in a, in a permanent capacity, but we could also then identify in the aggregate like we have done in the past for, we did in the past for, for Edward Roshan, um, the goals and priorities uh, for the following year, um, which would be also very helpful uh, for her uh, as she moved uh, you know, into a permanent uh, capacity. If I could just add, um, Commissioner Cameron here, I think the first tool is, as I see it, uh, for the purposes of um, our next, uh, let's say we do decide to bypass the posting, for our next step would be whether or not we actually engage the interim executive director as the permanent executive director. Um, so the, the two tools would be, the first one would be getting um, input agency-wide on what is perceived to be the important priorities of the agency. Then we would be able to assess if we agree with, you know, so let's say there's 15 goals and 10 of which we also see as a group, yeah, those are priorities. Would Karen be well suited to move the agency in the, that direction? So that goal searching piece is important at this, at this juncture as we assess um, the, that uh, step of, of um, hiring her as permanent. The second part, as I understand uh, the tool uh, that Commissioner Zuniga might uh, use, would be more of a traditional um, survey from those reports who have been working with Karen the last six, uh, seven months that assess um, her strengths and also suggest, you know, get other general input um, from them in terms of how Karen is as a leader, manager, problem solver, that kind of thing. And so, you know, presumably uh, they, we would get um, input and if there were flags that might inform our decision or it might, um, it might counter our decision, but it also may um, be something that would give good guidance as, as you, you know, make a hire. So those are the two tools. Is that fair to say, um, Enrique, that you're imagining? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very fair. Um, the the one thing I would add, uh, actually, I would uh, reiterate, which I think you mentioned before, is we could we could. I don't think this is a likely scenario, but we could arrive at a point in which we have a set of priorities, um, and Karen could very well say, "Well, I don't know that I'm up for it. I doubt that this would be a scenario again." But this would be part of the process to ensure. Um, that the expectations that we collectively have, the priorities that have been uh, collectively identified, yeah. are simply communicated and, and, and you know, to, to set the person, um, set Karen on a, on a good footing to go, go going forward. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Um, so the That's question helpful. I have, how, my question is how Karen would receive the information um, and this may be a discussion that you've already thought through, et cetera, what the actual workings of it are. But to your point, she may say, I'm, I'm not interested. I want to go back um, to Director of IEB. Um, you know, thank you for the experience, but I'd prefer to stay. Part of that may be determined by what the survey results are. So how is it that it would be conveyed to her? Is it something that's going to be purely factual? Or is this something that would then be analyzed by us and we come up with priorities that are then forwarded to her to make that decision? Well, we have a few options, uh, uh, needless to say. We, um, we could help get the help of, um, of HR in terms of aggregating any kind of feedback um, that, uh, um, you know, that uses best practices in these kinds of surveys. Um, for example, uh, we, could, we could have certain attributes that have ratings, uh, and just like they do um, in the you know in the Olympics, they they you, we could eliminate the the smallest and the the, 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 the least favorable and the most favorable and have an aggregate. Um, it, it's a it's a best practice because you know it eliminates somebody who just uh, you know puts in tens or, or zeros or ones, and it gets to a better outcome in the mm -hmm. aggregate. They could, we could, we also could have, and I was envisioning, uh, Sharon and I were, were, were talking about uh, just brainstorming a little bit, 
just open-ended questions that again could be aggregated and shared uh, with Karen. You know, much like a 360 type of uh, review that um, which we have talked about in the past, um, and we did in, in a different capacity with uh, with an outside uh, person or our first executive director. Now, um, or or not? Again, this is this is something that we could we could decide. Um, we could. If we didn't, that part of the survey could simply go to commissioners to inform uh, performance of evaluation, something that we have done uh, in the past in a similar capacity. We have uh, statements, uh, open-ended type of questions or, or about uh, certain attributes, and those could also be aggregated uh, and shared with Karen. Um, like we had, like we did the last time with uh, with Director Betrosian, uh, as part of uh, as part of the process. Um, one of the one of the reasons for aggregating is, and I don't think anybody's going to be, um, you know, I'm not thoughtful, um, is to to minimize the possibility of identifying who said what at what instance, uh, because what's important is to try to be specific, because that's what's most uh, helpful. But but not in a way that um, that gets uh, you know, somebody just uh, uh, identifying somebody in particular. Uh, that's especially uh, important in my view for um, for a survey that gets done with staff. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the numbers, the power of numbers, I think, uh, would, would be really helpful in that regard. Okay. Commissioner Stevens, do you want to chime in at this point? I don't mean to put you on the spot. But... Yeah, no, no. Whoops. Sorry. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's my guy. Um, no, I, I appreciate the comments. You know, I, I, I certainly value the, and we, I know we've talked about this, and this has been a long-standing goal, as we looked ahead to an executive director search. Obviously, we were talking about this pre pre-pandemic, pre-crisis, and, and certainly find ourselves in a different position. But I think, uh, you know, the idea of surveying staff is uh, still a helpful process. I think it would inform our interim executive director. It would certainly inform any other candidate who might come forward at some point if that's where we find ourselves uh, as to uh, what the expectations are of the staff. Uh, I think it's appropriate, as Commissioner Zuniga pointed out, as being the hiring manager to perhaps have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with, with the senior leadership of the team um, to eventually find ourselves almost in creating a, a document that's part job description, part uh, kind of goal setting uh, is a basis for an evaluation going forward as well. Um, you know, I'm reminded, you know, our first two executive director searches, and, the, and this is unique to this position, is that, uh, you know, the final hiring decision is made in public. And we always knew that some candidates chose not to have that public interview process. Um, and that's unique. This is the only position within the commission that, it, uh, that it's required. So, um, I like the consideration of these kind of first two steps. If, I, if I've heard them correctly, the survey of staff, let's get their input, the hiring manager talking with senior staff and, and the creation of some type of expectation for, uh, for job responsibilities um, in, the, in the, the type of person we want to have serve as our executive director. Um, get to those steps first, and I think that would put us in a good position then for um, Commissioner Zuniga as the hiring manager to have, you know, the, the respective conversations that he would want to have with our interim executive director. Other thank questions you. or thank, comments? Thank you, Commissioner Stevens. I will, um, just a very small uh, note of clarification. I did not presume that I would be that hiring manager, um, but, but thank you. I think uh, you, you have you, you, you're, you're essentially agreeing on, 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 on the process that I'm trying to articulate. Right. Um, yeah, I think to get yeah, you off the hook. I think Commissioner Zuniga clarified that the five of us are in fact the hiring manager um, for this particular position under the policy, but um, he is managing our process for us. So it doesn't get any of us off the hook, but you know, right now um, I think that 
what we're just looking for today with understanding that Commissioner Zuniga would continue to inform us on the process and share any survey document in advance through the proper channels and appliance with open meeting law. Um, uh, we would um, continue on the process and keep you informed. I think that, you know, I think we have a sense of that, uh, that it would be a good thing to keep this moving, uh, that we don't, we have a good process um, coupled by really a seven months on the job review and to perhaps move on this. Uh, it will also, um, you know, if there's a decision to move in a different direction, it's fair to, um, most fair to interim executive director Wells at this, at this juncture. Uh, you know, when we started, uh, I thought that there is a great benefit in getting the expertise of an outside firm uh, because it's neutral and allows for the uh, the process to be very anonymous at this juncture. I, I no longer think that's practical. We made that decision early on that we, under these conditions, with the um, revenues that would be required, the payment of that firm, it just didn't make sense. And I've become very comfortable with the idea of of uh, this kind of process at this stage. With that said, you know it is it is it is it is different from the process we in initially envisioned, which would be more traditional with the posting and uh, the more universal outreach. So I, I guess the question is, do we have a consensus to have Commissioner Zunica move in this direction, or should we pause and uh, and go ahead with the with the posting at this point? Um, can I chime in here? Um, two things. I certainly agree with the desire to move this along, and that considerable amount of time has gone by, which does allow us to have a body of work that we would not have had. So I do think that's an important piece here, and I am in agreement that um, I, I, it's, it's apparent to me that this was thoughtfully um, considered before coming to us with this recommendation. And I, I'm in agreement that this is a good way to move forward. Yeah, I'm, I'm also in agreement. I think this is, uh, I think the initial steps are a great tool, um, both to benefit our interim executive director as well as uh, the rest of us as we move forward in kind of the, the new normal for gaming operations. So um, I agree that, you know, the, the steps are well worth it and I think will create an informative tool for our our next permanent executive director to use. But I agree with Commissioner Cameron's comments about the good body of work we've seen from our interim executive director during this crisis. Commissioner O'Brien, do you want to chime in at this point? Um, I, I think it makes sense given um, as you said, where we thought we were going to be in this process, seeking outside firms, Sarah, it's not practical at this point. Um, we do have the body of work. I'm sure you've thought about it too, but if for some reason, you know, she does decline, that would put us in a position of doing a posting, but not with potentially an outside firm, you know, going forward and seeing what's out there. Um, obviously, this process, I think, can be executed um, quickly, which I think is also a benefit to everyone involved here. Um, to move on with making the, the position um, of who the executive director is permanently. Um, I've, you know, been pleased and, and confident with her thus far, and I would, you know, look forward to seeing what the survey results are of the organization as a whole. Thank you, uh, Commissioners. I, I, I do too. Uh, I should mention that, um, you know, uh, Trupti, uh, Natasha in HR, um, you know, I've already done some thinking as to what and helped us think what those questions might be. Um, there's a there's a really good tool in you know that that they know how to use. I don't, but with their help, uh, that that is very um, quickly to deploy. And and my guess is that coming coming from where it's coming, um, the staff is going to be thoughtful and take their time, uh, you know, to give uh, good feedback. Um, and uh, you know, I think that's that's the that's the first necessary step, an important one, but one that could be executed in, in rather short order. Uh, 
I think you have a consensus, Commissioner Zuniga, to move okay. forward. And um, I want to thank you for your thoughtfulness on this. I want to also thank uh, Commissioner Zuniga for all the work, again, that he's done during the last several months on both the budget, the internal controls, and of course, the work that he does with Mark on the Public Health Trust Fund. His, uh, his head is probably... And I know a, a vacation is coming due shortly. It's, it's, it's coming soon. It's, um, I, I can't complain. I think everybody is doing uh, you know, the, the best they can in their areas of, of expertise and domain. I, uh, I'm glad, for example, that others have taken on the task of the working group for reopening. And I can get uh, the benefit of, uh, you know, of the updates uh, that, that clearly show a lot of great, thoughtful work behind. Excellent. All right. So you have you have some good marching orders. Thank you. And again, thanks thank you. to Trupti and Natasha and, and Derek too for on his leadership there. So thank you so much. Okay. Um, so item number six, um, that is my piece. I just wanted to note formally that I have convened a working group on equity and inclusion in the workplace at the Gaming Commission with the goal of reviewing our practices to ensure that implicit bias uh, does not result in any disproportionate impact or effect on people or communities of col color. Uh, the practices of the MGC, we all know, have a broad reach. They not only affect our internal team, but they also extend to the greater community. For instance, we license, investigate, and conduct background studies of prospective casino employees. And we're responsible for an extensive research agenda that explores the impact of expanding gaming on particular communities, people of color. We're responsible for the provision of on-site responsible gaming intervention services at the gaming facilities. Further, the MGC supports each casino in the engagement of diverse contractors and vendors. The current discourse on race we know stretching across the country does prompt us for immediate reflection. This is a very thoughtful commission and a thoughtful team. We've known that sustained work and commitment against racial inequity and implicit bias result in the most competent of dynamics and produces a happier, more inclusive, productive, and purposeful team. So the work of this group will be ongoing and involve all of us at the Gaming Commission ultimately. Initially, this group will create a straightforward action plan that will inform the work across the uh, Gaming Commission. We know the first step will implement training on implicit bias for our entire team, and we're fortunate there are excellent virtual options as we continue to work remotely. And we'll report regularly to the commission to be held accountable and ensure uh, the sustainability of our efforts. A recent article published by Jenny Annis of the New York Times provided helpful insights on how to begin this important work at this juncture in our nation's history. She reminded us to just start, get to work. So I want to thank the working group for helping me in this effort. I've invited and they've all agreed to be part of this. Commissioner Zuniga, Karen Wells, Jill Griffin, Trupti Banda, Tanya Perez, and Paul Eldridge. We'll be meeting for the third time formally at the beginning of next week and will continue to inform us, all of you, on on our work and your next steps. So thank you again and uh, thank the entire team for always being thoughtful on these matters. Any questions on that? Uh, no questions, Madam Chair, other than I, I do believe it's a really good idea and um, the group sounds terrific. And um, I, I really, I think it's always worth the work uh, undertaking to understand better and make changes where necessary. So thank you all for that. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. I, I was just gonna say that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thankful for, um, for being included, um, thankful to Kathy for for thinking about this. I think it's 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 timely, but it's also 
a good practice to do these kind of things regularly. There's, uh, there's, uh, we've done training like this, uh, like what we're envisioning in the past, um, but it's always important to continue to do that. Uh, and where this, the, all of the context and environment around us, uh, I think provides uh, a, a, an opportunity and a, I think an obligation uh, for everybody, um, ourselves included in our narrow view of, of, of how what we do affects people. Um, to continue to look at where there may be uh, barriers or there are outcomes that are not necessarily being yielding the intended outcomes. Um, and, and again, come back and, and evaluate and, and modify if necessary. So I look yeah, forward I to the work. Yeah, and I have to thank Commissioner Zuniga. This is, you know, his voice is so critical on, on these efforts and his insights. Uh, and I know that when we actually end up you know, sharing the action plan, all five of us will be involved, but I really thank him for his leadership in this, in this effort. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, item number seven, uh, Commissioner updates. Any other updates? I just have one, Madam Chair, and that is um, the Racing Committee met yesterday yes. for a lengthy meeting, and I actually wanted to thank the, uh, the Commission for authorizing the committee to go ahead and separate our decisions into purses, breeding, and health and welfare, which was very helpful and um, did result in a change of split um, for each of the three categories and thoughtful discussions around all of that work um, went into this in particular because of this decision to, to be able to assess separately, it required an awful lot of work for our team. Um, our, our racing director, Dr. Leipam, our interim general, general counsel, um, Todd Grossman, and certainly um, Shara Bedard also were very instrumental in pulling together documents for the committee um, that were really helpful in making decisions uh, for this um, for this change in the split and um, decisions were made yesterday it needs to be memorialized and then to the legislature for 30 days and then it will come to the to, to the full commission but I just wanted to thank everybody on the team and, and in particular um, our our staff as well as the commission because it was really helpful to be able to consider these um, categories separately and we did make some decisions differently than we had in the past. That's good news and thank you for for your role in all of that Commissioner Cameron. Uh, it's been instrumental and uh, and productive. This has been a, a, a nice new yeah. new step so thank yeah. you. Yeah thank you and uh, it's it's probably fair to say without necessarily asking for the exact splits. Um, it's probably fair to say that uh, perhaps uh, health and welfare is now prioritized more across the board in terms of... Um, well, I, I think it was a public meeting, so I can talk about the, um, the recommended splits that the committee made. And um, so uh, with, with regard to purses and breeding, um, which were at 65-35, the committee um, uh, recommends moving it up 5%, the numbers, all of the criterion that we looked at. Um, so it would be 70, 30 in both of those categories. But where there was a change was health and welfare and um, you know, lots of letters that came in, emails to the, to the uh, committee about uh, how important that money is to some of those folks in particular on the thoroughbred side who have not um, had an easy time making a living. Um, so the group decided to the committee to um, change those. And so 60% of that money next year um, will be, uh, it's recommended that that money go over to the thoroughbred um, health and welfare side um, because of the information they put forth in the committee valuing uh, the work that was done on that end. And even the um, standard bred representative uh, on, the, um, on the committee uh, agreed with this in, and voted in the affirmative. Sounds like it was, I, I didn't get to hear the 
the um, meeting yesterday and get to attend, and I wish I had been able to, but it sounds as though it was really thoughtful and it worked. That uh, I, I think it's, I, I believe Commissioner Stebbins was uh, on board listening in. So as someone who's not on the committee, you may, you may want to chime in about that, um, Commissioner Stebbins. It was, uh, it was, it was long. Um, thank you, <laughs> Commissioner Cameron, for your role. Um, but uh, you know, the it, it was nice to see the uh, the the give and take and polite and collegial debate, if I can say, between the uh, between the two horsemen's groups. But uh, it, it, at the end, uh, everybody understands kind of the challenges and opportunities ahead for both uh, for both horsemen's groups and. Uh, I think the results, as Commissioner Cameron said, were uh, well thought out, and everybody at the end of the day had a chance to make their say and uh, and leave the room in agreement. So, excellent. A little innovation went a long way there, and and thanks to I know Todd and, and Char were really instrumental, and of course Dr. Lightbrown. So, uh, thank you. But it really showed that just looking at it a little bit differently. Excellent. Any further questions for uh, Gail on that matter? And any um, further updates? There we are. Um, Interim Executive Director Wells, do you have anything further that you want to add? No, I, I just wanted to confirm. Are, are we, I wanted to confirm. Are we scheduled for another meeting next Thursday, the 23rd? No, I think we have a um, uh, agenda setting on the 22nd. Okay, so uh, given that, I'm, I'm realizing I just I really want to um, just publicly thank Bill Curtis uh, for all the work that he has done uh, for our agency. Uh, he does have another opportunity and he will be leaving us. And Bill has been with the agency since the beginning. Uh, he's one of the first employees brought over. He had some work in racing, is continually promoted throughout the agency, has done a tremendous job. Uh, he's one of these people that um, just is really committed to doing good work. And everyone uh, that he comes in contact with says the same thing and commends not only his work ethic, but the productivity that he has and also the relationships that he built. He uh, has built relationships with not only the folks at the casinos and within his team itself and with uh, all the vendors and employees that uh, work through the licensing process. So Bill has been a tremendous, tremendous asset to our agency. And Bill, I just want to thank you personally and publicly for all the work that you have done. We're going to miss you tremendously. And I just didn't, uh, I just didn't want to, a public meeting to go by without acknowledging that and publicly saying thank you. So I know your team's gonna miss you so much. They love you. Uh, they're very loyal to you. Uh, I see Marianne Bratton, she's giving a thumbs Faces up. Faces are appearing, Bill. Yes, I love it. <laughs> so for all, of, for all of you on, if you right. wanna join us visually. Right. I really, uh, you know, and for anyone on the licensing team that would like to say something to Bill in this public forum, I just want to uh, give you that opportunity because Bill is, is really well loved and has done a tremendous job. I, I can't even begin to explain the amount of extra hours that, that man has worked over the years. Uh, and he really built uh, just a tremendous team, did a wonderful job. Uh, I know that everyone is gonna miss him um, and I hope he stays in touch. He will be uh, working in, in a sort of a similar role in a, in a, in a different entity, but I wanted to give Bill the shout out uh, in a public meeting because he deserves it and uh, and just give him a big thank you and I'm gonna miss you. Thanks Karen. Um, I appreciate the kind words. I'm gonna miss working with everybody especially Lisa, Mary Ann, Mary, Connor, uh, Tara. Um, there's so many people to um, thank but you know we're only so, sex so, sex so successful as the team were. I mean without Mary Ann, Lisa, Mary and Connor and Tara, I don't think we would have got where we got, but I'll, I'll miss everybody. But I appreciate the kind words. And our paths will cross again, you know that. Oh, you know it. <laughs> can, I, can I just say, I, um, Mr. Curtis has been a pleasure to work with, and I will certainly miss his Yankee gear in our office. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. Uh, no, he, in, in, in all sincerity, uh, Bill, any question about licensing, you are always there. You brought great expertise, you brought great leadership, and um, we will miss you.
I see you're st still sporting your pandemic beard. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but no, good luck with the uh, new endeavor and we will miss you. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate I it. I'll miss you too. I don't want to interrupt any commissioners, but I would like to offer my thanks for Bill for the development. He took somebody who started out as a receptionist with no experience in the licensing field and turned me into a really great specialist and guided me and helped me through uh, my path and has turned us into a really high functioning team. And so I'm really grateful for the direction and for all the hard work that he's put in. And when we were discussing with uh, <coughs> Karen and uh, Derek the other day, the situation that he was going to be moving on to a new opportunity, the first thing that came out of all of our mouths when we said what we're looking for in a new person was a working manager, and that's what you've been. So thank you. Thanks, Marianne. It's been a pleasure working with you. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> um, before we go to the other commissioners, other team members who want to chime in, this is really a nice treat for all of us. Um, I'm not going to say my, my words yet, but anybody want to chime in? I, I'm looking to see if I can expand my... Uh, my view to see more of you. I'll say okay. something. Um, yeah, there you are, Lisa. <laughs> now I see you. Hi, Lisa. Hi, um, um, it's nice to see your face, Lisa. And Mary. Same here. Um, it's it's been a pleasure to work with Bill over the last two and a half years that I've been with the commission. I come from the private sector, and he took me under his wing and showed me all the tricks of the trade. And it's it's really been fun, and I'm really going to miss partnering with partnering with him and working together with him. But I know that our paths will continue to cross, will continue to be friends, and I wish you all the best. And as I said before, as you've taught me, it's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> Thanks, Lise. Appreciate it. Hi. So I see that um, our friend Burke, I don't know why you're just not chiming right in, Burke. <laughs> um, do you want to say it out loud? It was from one BC to another BC. <laughs> uh, Brian Connors, Billy Curtis, and I often say hello, BC, and they go, hey, BC. So it's just <laughs> our little circle of friendship there. And uh, good luck, Bill. It is a great pleasure working with you. When I came up here from uh, down south, New Jersey there, I wasn't really sure what a Boston accent was. <laughs> and I was able to find out quickly how to... Uh, Understand a little bit of Bostonese. Thank you. Thanks, Bert. Good luck. Been great working with you. I think he acted as our interpreter initially, didn't he, Bert? <laughs> 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 yes, that's right. Other other team members want to chime in? Poor Marianne. I wish I could hand you a tissue. This is Loretta. I'd like to jump in and um, just recognize the many hours of problem solving that Bill and I spent together. And uh, it was a, a productive and creative uh, collaboration uh, in some uh, challenging, uh, tricky uh, puzzles uh, that we were able to reach uh, positive um, results with. And uh, in addition to just a, a personal uh, repertoire that I've really enjoyed with you, I do want to thank you for those times that we. Uh, worked uh, to good conclusions on uh, some challenging uh, situations. Thanks, Loretta. We did. So good um, luck, Bill. You always made me think a little bit more out of the box than uh, what I was uh, used to. So I appreciate what you did with me in that way. But I'll miss you. I'll miss having our little discussions of trying to figure out things and trying to help uh, vendors as well as the, um, licensees as well as employees. So yeah. thank you. Captain Connors, were you trying to chime in? Absolutely. Wouldn't miss the opportunity. Uh, I wonder. Thank yeah. you. Um, well, I, mean, I think I speak for you know, 60 plus members of our unit of the DEU who have probably uh, caused a lot of those gray hairs on the beard of Bill over the years, um, <laughs> peppering him with constant uh, requests and questions, and some of which may have been right in front of them. But um, there was always a gentleman and professional in walking us through it. And you always knew that you were going to get a solid answer, a right answer, and a quick answer. Bill was always very responsive uh, and really took, uh, you know, it took great patience to walk us through learning the systems throughout the years uh, and really get this LMS system where it, where it is today. And that, that's a testament to Bill that, and the work that he's done 
uh, to get the commission's uh, LMS system, which is critical to where it is. So um, although he has a near, near fatal flaw of being a Yankee fan, uh, we're going to miss him. Um, but really, on behalf of everybody here from the GEU, uh, you've been uh, fantastic to work with. We appreciate uh, the work that you've done with us and for us, uh, but also for your friendship over the years, Bill. Wish you the best of luck. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. It's been great work with you guys. Um, you know, it's, it's always great to work with law enforcement and what you guys do. It's difficult. And, you know, I respect you every day for what you do. And, and just the way all, all your, you and all your men, you know, uh, carry themselves. Um, anytime I have a question, they're always there to help me out. Somebody that we need to be fingerprinted, you know, your guys would be like, yeah, okay, when do you want me to do it? Um, they never said no. They always said yes. So I'll miss that. I'll miss that. And I'll, I'll miss ribbing you a little bit about, yeah. Your last place Red Sox, so. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, Bill, Bill you, said, you, said, you said men, but you mean all men and women. A lot of uh, women yeah. as well. In the, in the yep, that was a slip. And, and Miss, Mr. Curtis, uh, Bill, yes, you know, this season is uh, hope springs <laughs> eternal. Are you kidding? I have great faith in our Red Sox. So <laughs> we will be keeping in touch uh, to, okay. uh, to see how that plays out. Exactly, exactly. If, if I, I may, can I, chime I, in. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Please. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. There's I'll go Jill. next. I'll go next. No, go ahead, Jill. Sure. Um, if, I think we all should um, wish to attain the Bill Curtis level of customer service at the MGC. He truly cares about the people that he uh, works with, whether it's a um, employee or a potential employee and a vendor. And I just have to say, um, Bill, you will be missed. I really enjoyed working with you and, and really admire um, um, the care, the caring that you bring to your job. You truly care about those you work with. So thank you. Thanks, Jill. Gonna miss working with you. We have a lot of fun. Todd? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I too, I couldn't miss an opportunity to uh, say uh, goodbye for now to our great friend, Bill Curtis. Uh, he and I personally go back a long way. Uh, he is one of the all time greats, a real thoughtful, conscientious guy, a real smart guy, done an amazing job for this commission. We all owe him a debt of gratitude and you should always know that you've got a friend in me and I hope to uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, TG. I just really wish you made it into that movie, though. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> Fellow commissioners? I'll, I'll, I'll go now. Uh, and, and part of the problem of going last is that uh, all these thoughtful people have made uh, some of the points that I wanted to make. Um, I'll just summarize by uh, echoing uh, some of what Karen was saying. You were there from the beginning uh, through, through trying times in the development of that LMS with pressure mm -hmm. to get something done uh, that was new to many of us, uh, yourself included, but learned um, what, what needed to, to happen in terms of, of the gaming uh, nuances and the development of systems. And, uh, and highlight uh, what I think are three key attributes that will that served us really well that you brought and that will serve you really well as you move on. And that is your, your methodical approach to things, uh, your patience and collaboration and work with others. And uh, as Jill mentioned, your, your sense of public service, uh, something that has been really um, uh, um, manifested itself in all the work that you do uh, and that's a really good testament to uh, and, and reflection of the commission for which we are really grateful thanks enrique i appreciate it mr stevens sure i uh i just want to weigh in and, and and wish my my colleague and my very good friend bill curtis the best of luck um he, is, he has been with us from the start, from those early days over on State Street, where we were, I think, taking applications by chiseled tablet. Uh, and we certainly have made a lot of progress since then. But uh, uh, I'll certainly miss uh, uh, Bill. But, you know, he, he has built an incredible team. Uh, I was out in Springfield one day having lunch with a friend. I came around a corner of a restaurant and there was Bill and the whole licensing team having lunch out in Springfield. Um, I'm sure Bill picked up the bill. 
Um, but it was great to see everybody. He's built an incredible team. He's just been uh, an incredible member of our team. You know, Jill talked about his customer service. Uh, you know, an, an incredible uh, uh, baseball player sent him a bat thanking him for all his help. Unfortunately, we had to return it because we can't accept <laughs> gifts. Uh, but, I, but I think that bat was a true testament to uh, just the great work Bill has done. And uh, I'll miss him and I will ask our interim executive director to make sure that Bill has access to the building to remove all of his Yankee paraphernalia before he goes. Um, I, don't, I don't need to see that floating Yankee <laughs> helmet hanging out in the office. Uh, but I'll miss you, my friend. Good luck. And uh, we'll always have that picture of you in a Red Sox hat with your thumbs up. It's a, it's a reminder of your, uh, your long yeah. career. But thanks, oh, God. I'll miss you. Thanks, Bruce. I'll miss you, too. We'll stay in touch. We'll have to have, still have that little Red Sox-Yankee uh, discussion all the time. Commissioner Brian? Uh, sure. Um, as Enrique said, it's, you know, I think what, uh, echoing what everybody has already said, I, I didn't get to work with Bill as long as everybody else uh, on the meeting today, but I have to say, um, if for someone new to this industry, new to this process, you were um, not only incredibly patient, but also had an ability to succinctly get me up to speed on everything. Um, made me feel like I wasn't crazy if I had questions about something and needed graphics or anything like that. You were very, very helpful with all that. I think, um, much as I hate to lose you, I also think it speaks to not only the skills you've gotten at the MGC, but also what I saw as skills you had when you came in the door, your knowledge about, you know, your time at the city and everything that was also helpful, helping me think outside the box in the, in the few times we had to work together on something. I really appreciated it. Um, I wish you luck in your new endeavors. As everyone said, I'm sure we're going to be crossing paths again, um, given where you're going, but, uh, I wish you well. Uh, I didn't know about the Yankees thing. I'm kind of <laughs> glad I didn't know until now. <laughs> and, um, I will keep it in mind, but I, I look forward to seeing you again and, and good luck. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner O'Brien. I appreciate our time and you always had some great questions. You always made me think. Thanks, Bill. Any other team member? We can't, we don't have cake to send you up. No, um, it's so who sad. Needs, who needs cake, right, Bill? But um, Chair, I do have the picture of Bill oh, in the Red Sox hat, which is going to stay at the commission. Do you want to share okay, that right that's now? going up on the wall. Do you, do you want to share it right now? <laughs> so I, I, I do want to um, personally uh, wish Bill the best of luck. Um, I can candidly say that Bill was unique in welcoming me a, a year and a half ago uh, to the Gaming Commission. Bill stood out um, as a, a warm teammate to me. And like Commissioner O'Brien, when I asked that umpteenth question, he exhibited great professionalism, kindness, thoroughness, patience. And then all of a sudden it clicked and I got things because of that. You took the time to sit down with me. The PowerPoint was in place and not that all that process is expected, it was, but it, you did produce it because you are methodical and you're careful and, and you know your stuff. You are competent and all of that was very apparent to me. And then I had the pleasure of being able to sit down with you and uh, with your remarkable team. And I know that probably I know that they're going to really miss you. Um, I also know that we have a strength in our organization that we will support your team and they will be successful because of everything that you did. And I know that's what you wish for them and for us. Mm -hmm. But you have uniquely changed my experience at the Gaming Commission. And um, I know personally that um, I am going to miss you terribly. Um, I um, can can only say thank you. It meant the world to me to know that you were there. And so thank you so much. I also want to comment that you are a remarkable family man. Um, you are a great dog owner. <laughs> and you, regardless of your taste in baseball teams, um, and apparently you don't have to worry about removing any of that Yankee um, stuff because uh, Captain Connors is taking care of it for you, as he should have. Look like he said it's done. <laughs> but you um, are a, 
have been a remarkable contributor to public um, in public service. And Jill Griffin hit on the nose. I know our, our licensees will miss you terribly. You are have been great at your external affairs. It is a gift, and it's not surprising to me that somebody else scooped you up. And so for that, I wish them well. They are very lucky to have you. And I do know our paths will inevitably cross, and I'm hoping it crosses in person, Bill, and that you and I can, can meet for an after work beer. Best of Thank luck. You. Thank you, Chair. Um, I appreciate you um, letting me get to know you and able to explain licensing and you're able to meet the team and, and just know how great they are. Um, you know, th they'll do awesome. Um, they'll just keep carrying on work. I mean, they, they understand that you know, licensing is pretty much, I, mean, I know that the commissioners are their front face, but the first people that anybody meets when they come in the door, whether it, oh, excuse me, the door or they have a telephone call or an email, it's licensing. So they see us first and they see us at the end and everybody realizes that on the team and you know, they just wanna um, just give, give a great feeling that everybody has when they, they finish dealing with the MGC. I can't even talk anymore, so sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna miss everybody, but um, our paths will definitely cross and anytime you wanna get together, just let me know. And for people that don't know why I'm a Yankee fan, it's not just because I grew up in Hyde Park, but um, my dad was drafted by them in 1948 out of Hyde Park High. My dad is also in the New England Sports Museum. Um, that's in the TV Garden as well. Um, so that's why the family, half the family are Yankee fans, the other half are Red Sox fans. My wife's a Red Sox fan. My three dogs are Red Sox fans. But my son <laughs> and my soon-to-be grandson will be, they're both Yankee, they'll be Yankee. He'll be a Yankee fan too. My son's a Yankee fan and my soon-to-be grandson will be a Yankee fan as well. So we'll make and sure. Is, and remind us when that baby's due. Um, he's due November 13th. I'm trying to get them to push it off to the 23rd, so uh, he'll be born on my birthday too. So my, my <laughs> wife and I are pretty excited. So but we already got him a um, we got him. A, um, Steph got him a knitted Bruins hat. So oh, good. I just good have to, to find know. the Yankee one now. So you know. Good to know. <laughs> well, um, I hope that you keep us up to date on that grandson, and we wish. Um, Thank you. We wish everybody well there, and um, we wish you well, your wife well. And um, again, speaking for the entire team, but speaking personally, I'm going to miss you terribly. So I miss you uh, too. Thank, thank you so much. And uh, I guess we can do the virtual applause. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And we will definitely cross paths. You know that. Um, just yeah. a matter of time before that happens. Yeah, well, again, I think um, it was Eileen who, who referenced, you know, you've got an awful lot of great skills and uh, it, it's something that we're happy that we contributed to. You came in, um, you know, as we heard and you're leaving um, to go to a, a new challenge and I know that they're going to be very lucky to have you. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, if I could have you do it, I'd have you make the motion, but I think protocol <laughs> no. requires me to have one of my fellow commissioners do that. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Is there any objection other than the objection being that we have to say goodbye to Bill this way? All right. Duly noted. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Zuniga. Hi, right, thank you everybody. Thank you, Bill. Commissioner Uh Thank you everybody. Thanks, Bill. Aye. And I vote yes. Thank you, 5-0. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye, Bill. <laughs>